My next question goes to lover boy Lord Harriet. One thing I love is new things. I am a free spirit, always looking to try new things. What new experiences could you open my eyes to? So what do we have here, eh? Someone is a real kinky minx. I tell you, I could endure drastically filthy experiences with you all evening, my dirty fuck puppet. So, what dirty things are we talking about here, Lord Harriet? Well, Jasmine, one would have to be foolish to implore. You know the old saying, what happens in the bedroom stays in the bedroom. All I would suggest is you bring a snorkel, an elastic band, two apple pies, slightly warm, a bag of huggies, and a Darth Maul mask. And I tell you, Jasmine, you best get ready for a fanny transplant, because I'm going to knock yours right off. Oh, oopsie, I've gotten all wet. Lord Harriet, you certainly have made an impression. Well, unlike this pack of shitmongers, I have the balls of a sperm whale, the stomach of a pedophilic serial killer, and the imagination of a half-man, half-octopus, with the talents of using all eight of his tentacles erotically. Wowee! If I could pick now, it would be you, my lord. Anyway, on to the next question. This question goes out to Ian Dowie. Ian, as a woman, I always like to look and feel good about myself. If you were my man, how would you make me feel good about myself? Well, first of all, I would just like to say that it has been a divine pleasure being in a room full of magnificent people. If I died right now, I would die a happy man. The most magnificent, of course, being my dear good friend, Tony. I am telling you, Tony, you have a voice that oozes liquid purity. If there ever was a radio presenter who combined charisma and personality with raw talent and sex appeal, it was you, Tony. Well, um, Ian, again, I don't know what to say. You're just a very nice man. You really have made my day. Well, Tony, it's your day. You are the king of your own destiny. And I tell you, I would totally suck you off to get a radio slot. Well, yeah, I am kind of a king. Um, what was that sucking bit? Oh, nothing, friend. But seriously, I am a great presenter, too. I mean, I'm no contest when it comes to yourself, but, uh, well, get this. Welcome to Ian's Late Night, um, super awesome show Turbo, and, th and, so, and then Tony, some music playing like Super Ian, awesome show Turbo, and there are some effects like a crash, like whoosh, and some more voices like in the background going on radio now. And Ian, some more you present radio too? <laughs> what a coincidence. Two real good friends doing the same thing. Yes, and, and uh, you obviously in such a big studio, it must get very busy for you at all. Hinty hint. Um, I mean to say, presenting all night must get its toll, you know, just dropping it in there. Oh, don't you know the meaning of it, Ian? I'm busier than a Chinese cockle picker, me. Well, like I say, Tony, an extra voice could uh, come well in hand. Oh, you bet it would. You just can't find the staff. Um, well, of course, but sometimes the answer's right in front of you. By the way, Tony, I just had to say, your hair looks incredible today. What what did you use? Oh, this. It's just natural, really. The wife cuts it at home with a bowl and a pair of scissors. It's quite good with her hands, that one. <laughs> you bet you, champ. Hello, Ian. Oh, yes, Jasmine. I'd, um, I'd make you eternally happy by singing you a song every day. One that goes a little like this. Oh, Jasmine girl, your eyes, they are shining. From ear to ear, those eyes are just divine. Because I know that you will be my princess. Oh, Jasmine girl, oh, Jasmine girl, will you be mine? Oh, Ian, that is the sweetest thing anyone has ever sung to me. Well, Jasmine, my love is like a word as original. It makes your mouth water. No, uh, wait, um, no, my love is like a leather sofa. Hot in the summer and cold in the... no. Um, my love is like a salad fork. Sticks it right in... no, hang on. Um, a hairnet, no... Beehive. Oh, Ian, you are a silly boy. Well, I'm afraid it's an advertisement break now. 
but tune in after to find out which of our lucky three will become the new penis in Jasmine's sweet box of pleasure. Bye! More than one million people in the UK are suffering from Dave. In a world surrounded by Dave, life can often seem tough. We are asking, no, we are pleading to the goodness in your hearts that you look at these poor victims of humanity and donate £5 a month so we can rid ourselves of Dave. I remember life without Dave. Happiness. Me and my wife. <laughs> well, my wife. Dave took her. I just want to have a normal life again. Alan from Croydon used to have a life with children until Dave. Dave took them. Dave took everything. <laughs> Damn you, Dave. Damn you. Helen cannot even remember life without Dave. In fact, Dave has now completely overpowered poor Helen, who no longer has a life of her own. All she can now say is the word Dave. Dave! Dave! We at the Dodging Dave Society have special recovery clinics aimed to rid these poor people of Dave. But is it enough? With just five pounds a month, we can make Dave a thing of the past. Don't let Dave be the only thing in your world. Donate now and lead the fight against Dave. Welcome back, you Randy well wishes to Tony Voice Voice. We are, of course, here to set up a magic couple live on radio. Jasmine has heard enough from our three hopefuls to choose our salty Stavros. So, Jasmine, if you may, please give us the name of the first guy you'll be sending home. I'm so sorry to have to do this. They seem like such nice boys. But hey, boys, you're not ready, no? What the fuck, man? Mark, you're hearing this. I'm a fucking ragamatic, I am. Doctors even said it, man. I said I got too much sex drive, man. It's a rip-off anyway, Wayne. I'm telling you it's fixed. Fucking... Uh, I'm always on this fucking show, man. This is what I get, eh? A loyalty, eh, Tony? Why the fuck's a loyalty, you belly? No, I'm sorry, Wayne. It's up to the lady, not me. Right, man. Let's fucking go to the boat, man. I'm in the mood for a bit of dog wrestling. You're up for it, Mike? Yeah, man. I'm going to fuck up some dog's nose, man. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, I love you, Mike. OK. Cheerio, chaps. One down, one to go. Will it be a lovable Ian, my new best friend? Or will it be Lord Harriet? I am so sorry to do this, but I choose Lord Harriet. You bloody well hope you chose me too, you crazy bitch. Oh, I'm in the mood to ravage you harder than a psychosexual predator. Oh, you best be wearing clean underpants, girl, because I'm about to give you skid marks the size of the M5. Oh, my sweet Harriet, let's go make dirty my puss. Oh, I like the way she talks. Fuck you both, peasants. Well, goodbye, Lord Harriet and Jasmine. Enjoy your hotel stay. So, hey, Tony... <laughs> So, uh, the radio show. Well, this one's over, Ian. Another day or so, they say. So, um, are you going to uh, get me in, eh, buddy? Get you in? What do you mean? Uh, you know, Tony, I'm a radio presenter. You know that. You need a hand. Uh, I'm not sure I follow you. Oh, for fuck's sake, you retarded ass cheese. Are you getting me a fucking job, or do I really have to suck your penis? You want a job? Here. <laughs> Why didn't you say so? <sighs> Well, because I prefer to brown as my way up rather than work hard, make contacts, be good at something. Wait, worked at high school. Well, um, sorry to burst your bubble there, Ian, but this isn't actually a real radio station. What do you mean it's not a real radio station? Well, I've made it all up. We don't get real callers. This isn't even a real microphone. But what about... What about Wayne and the other guy, Adam Jervis? Stephen Jervis? Mr. Satan, Graham the paedophile, Mike, Craig Ball, Lord Harry. They're Hale. all friends, really. We're just having a mess about. Fuck you, Tony. If you've got a name, share it with me.